Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Flame, a popular game engine for the Flutter programming language. Now if you've never heard of Flutter before, well it used to be all about creating UIs for mobile applications, but the thing is, about a month ago, and I did a video on this, I will link this in the linked article down below so if you want to learn more, but about a month ago Flutter 2 was released, and one of the big things that Flutter 2 brought was uh, mobile, web, and desktop platform support, so suddenly creating cross-platform apps using Flutter became more realistic. You could target as many environments as you want, and this is built on a fast near-native core using Skia right now. I believe they're going to move to a different back end, but it gives you near-native performance. So naturally, you're going to think to yourself, well, wait a minute, if you can get cross-platform, nice UI, and near-native experiences, well, you can certainly make games with this, can't you? Well, that's what we were talking about today. We were talking about something called Flame. First off, if you want to uh, check out and learn a little bit more about Flutter, it is available at flutter.dev. And today what we are talking specifically about is Flame. This is a 2D and 2D only game engine built on top of Flutter. And I would actually argue this is probably... I actually think it's safe to say this is the most mature game engine out there. There are bindings for various different other engines out there. There's a couple of other options, but Flame seems to be the predominant one. The nice thing here is Flame is an open source project. And interestingly, you come here, there's not a lot to choose from. You can go check out the API or the documentation. The API is pretty robust. There's a good amount of details there. The cool thing also, as I mentioned earlier on, this is open source. It's under the MIT license. And if you want to grab it, basically just go ahead and clone this repository. If you want to get started with Flutter, your probably easiest bet is Visual Studio Code, which is becoming increasingly more common of a thing. Now, if you grab Visual Studio Code, you'll notice if you go into the extensions, there are extensions for the Dart programming language, the Flutter um, ecosystem is built on top of Dart. Now, if you've never used Dart before, and I haven't used it a whole lot, it's kind of one of those languages you can learn in a few days. It's built on top of uh, basically over JavaScript type thing. If you've worked with TypeScript, JavaScript, Hacks, any of those languages, Dart should be immediately comfortable, although you are going to find there are lots of brackets in Dart. Uh, and then also you can get native Flutter support inside of Visual Studio uh, so you can run your applications directly. Speaking of running your applications directly, uh, this is a repository of the Flame uh, code, basically. So I cloned it all down. And what you're probably most interested in is running the examples here. To go ahead and run that, it's pretty simple. Once you've got the, the Flutter stuff and the, the Dart stuff enabled, just go in here and start debugging. If it hasn't had any more, it'll set it up for the examples, and then you can run it uh, directly by using the run command. It will create the appropriate thing. Now, I'm actually running the examples already, and we can see them over here. This is one of the examples in action. It shows you how you can perform parallax in... Um, Flame. Now what you're seeing, this is actually running in my browser. You can create it so that it runs native. You can have it run on mobile or desktop as well as browser, uh, all using the same code base. Uh, and then you come up here, and it's implemented using stories. Now, this is a way of structuring code in Flutter, and we've got a number of different stories here kind of illustrating various different features of uh, what uh, Flame could do. So here you can see right now we're using the parallax example. This is the example, uh, the, the advanced example uh, here's one for sprite sheets and sprite sheet animations. Uh, we've got some here for handling the keyboard. We've got things here for, um, let's see, what else we got? We've got isometric tile map example in action right there. Uh, we've got things on circle-based collision detection. That one's not really that exciting. Uh, We've got basic animations here and so on. So this, if you're going to want to jump in here, it's using an AS or a sprite uh, example. Uh, scaling effects, combined effects. Let's look at the combined. Uh, that's that's exciting. Oh, oh, here we go. We're doing something now. Uh, so you've got a number of examples here. So if you want to go ahead and check out, uh, this is probably where you want to start if you're looking at Flame itself. Now, to actually grab this stuff, I will show you how to navigate through the code so you can see how to like kind of drill down and see what you were just looking at. So that is available in the examples directory. I actually cloned the repository. So I, I cloned this guy right here, the root of the Flame engine. Uh, basically, just git clone that guy right there and then open it up in Visual Studio Code with those extensions installed. Uh, you'll see it under the ex examples folder. And now what you wanna do is go into lib. And then here you see you've got your various different stories and so on. So you'll notice here main.dart. This is basically the entry point for that example. You're gonna notice uh, we're adding a number of different stories here. 
uh, to our dash book. And then how that's basically how all of the logic is broken down here. So you can see here we're adding animation, component, collision, and so on. Those correspond with these animation, component, collision, effects. So all the various different examples are underneath. So if you want to drill down into those, go here to stories. You're going to see the various different directories there. So animations, for example, and the basic animation code is here. And now welcome to some Dart code. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Again, it's kind of got a lot of look in common. It reminds me most of all of working with Node uh, code. It, it kind of has that same uh nested nature to it especially with the asynchronous callbacks and so on uh but again you will get comfortable with dart pretty quickly it's, it's a straightforward enough language from my experience and here you can see one of the examples in action so all of the various different things you want to look up this is where you want to come in and take a look now on top of that there is also a section here uh tutorials where you come in so you can see here like a sprite animation tutorial available here again it's lib and there is your example now the ultimate core of the dart project is going to be a game my game is inherited from uh, how did that work my game okay extends game like so and you're going to see it's got game the game class which is where your um your code will ultimately uh the heart of your game will be, the main loop of it is inherited from game here. So this is kind of showing you from the basics. And then what you've got is a series of lifestyle based calls. So on load, on tap, on tap up, on tap cancel. Now those are all coming from the mix in here of um, tap detector, which is a lot like if you're using C sharp, it's like uh, an interface uh, that you've uh, added in as well. So if you've got multiple different callbacks for different features, those are available here as well. Uh, then you've got your rendering callback and an update. Here is the heart. This is called every frame. So this is where you would put your actual game logic. So the tutorials are a pretty good place to start if you're wanting to do not a stories-based hierarchy of stuff. If you actually want to start rolling out your own game, you're going to probably want to do it in, in it's probably following this basis. So you're going to create your own game class, which extends from the game class. And then if you have various different features of or additional functionality you want to implement, such as here you can see tap controls, uh, you will mix in those particular classes. Classes. Now, again, if we head on back over here, let's go back a page. Uh, let's see. Oh, I only have one going. All right, here we go. Uh, go into the documentation. You're going to find all of those various different classes are documented pretty well. So there's like tappable, um, weird weirdly different different name uh but you can see that there also that was the api reference coming here to the docs which by the way is the same thing as clicking getting started uh this will walk you through what you need to know now interestingly enough i didn't see any actual audio examples in the example file uh, but there is flame audio out there uh, there's also a box 2d port called forge 2d so if you want to get into 2d animations that is an option out there as well and there is also a standalone package called flame tile now do keep in mind all of these are actually uh external packages they need to be added in uh i also hope that they're they're being constantly updated i can't tell you for sure certain if they are or aren't uh but do be aware there are those additional extensions available out there so if you want to use tile do you want to use box 2d collisions or you want to use audio there are these three uh components out there that you can grab uh getting started with this guy is is really simple too you just basically create your um, main dart project and in your dependencies and your pub spec yaml uh basically just put in the flame version you want and it will automatically download and resolve it when you build it so it, it's pretty simple to get up and going and then you've got a breakdown documentation of all the various different things here so for example if you want to handle input uh, they have so there is the tap collector we, we mixed in but if we wanted to have a long press detector instead uh, we could do that so we could extend out and add that here um, and here are all the various different uh, handling methods there's good documentation here too so if you want to get up and going it is a well-documented uh, library for sure uh, should you work with flutter and uh, flame does this ecosystem make sense well increasingly it does make more sense to be honest it's the fact that i think the big difference here is when they they rolled out uh, Flutter 2, this this arrival, the, the shipping of Flutter 2 and having it suddenly support uh, all of the different major platforms, web, mobile, and desktop, and the fact that it's not running in something like Electron, it's actually uh, building down to pretty much native code, and underneath it, you've got, again, Skia, uh, which is a high-performance 2D library down there. Your performance should be pretty close to native level, so you can do fast, high speed uh, games, but you also get all of the UI stuff and the design um, 
hierarchy that is used in Flutter. If so if you like the way that Flutter is laid out or you're already a Flutter developer, but you want to start creating games, well, Flame is a pretty darn good suggestion. So it's, it's an interesting library. Uh, so that's definitely why I have featured it today. Now, one thing you may have noticed as I flipped through these things over and over again, they also do have their Discord available out there. So if you've got any questions or comments or feedbacks, do check out their Discord. It's available there, but don't worry. I will link that in the linked article down below. So I will have a link to the source code to Flutter, the Flutter 2 announcement that I did earlier on, uh, the Discord server and everything else you might need in the linked article down below. So that is a quick look at uh, Flutter uh, and Flame. Uh, Flame is an interesting project. Uh, you've got a decent amount of functionality here. Some of it is a little bit on the basic side in terms of like I'm not seeing, again, there's no audio here. I'm surprised they don't have uh, an example using their audio library. Um, but you know you're not having you don't have really uh, advanced tooling here or anything like that. You basically would have to use something like uh, the tiled editor or um, oh it's not coming to me right now. It used to be called LED LED, uh, but it's got a new name now. Uh, there are other editors out there, but it's not a full blown game engine like you've come to expect from something like Unity or Godot or anything like that. It's more or less a framework. Uh, so where Flame probably makes by far and away the most sense is if you are already a Flutter developer and you want to get into games. Or if you wanted to create a relatively straightforward 2D game and run it on as many platforms as possible, well thanks now to Flutter 2 and the combination of Flutter and Flame, that is an option for you. So anyways, let me know what you think of this. Also, if you are a Flutter user, is there another game engine out there that you would recommend? Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.